Bitcoin's the dominant crypto asset. Ethereum is the dominant crypto application. You can divide the entire universe into some segments, you know, and Ethereum is competing with Binance Smart Chain and Solana. That's very competitive. They're very complicated. They're very centralized, much more centralized than Bitcoin. They have to be centralized because they need to run on proof of stake networks because they need the speed. Mm -hmm. So proof of stake itself is orders of magnitude more centralized than proof of work because you don't have these sprawling networks of miners with their ASICs everywhere on earth sucking up energy to keep any one person from getting control of the network. Bitcoin is, is like the dominant, the dominant winner of sound money. These other things, they're just very risky. They could crash, one could win, one could lose. Ethereum doesn't even run on proof of stake yet. So, hmm. you know, basically you don't know when they turn on proof of stake, the entire thing's not going to go in some bizarre way, right? What'll happen? You don't know. If, you ha if you're a crypto investor and you run a venture capital fund and you want to make investments with high risk, high reward, and you want to study it, and you want to take the risk, then you can trade in those things. But in my opinion, they're a hundred times less lucrative over time and they're a hundred times more risky. So it seems like it's a, you know, 10,000 to one difference. I wouldn't do it, but other people do it. And it's probably good for the industry because it markets the industry, right? This is a different risk tranche. If you're super smart and if you get, you know, if you guess, will it be Binance Smart Cone or Ethereum, or maybe it's both, maybe you trade. But, you know, when you get into that, you get this question of, well, when are you going to take money off the top? And when are you, you know, when are you going to diversify? And are you going to be in it forever? I tend to think I would prefer to invest in things I can hold for a decade, if not a hundred years. But there are plenty of people whose job is they're venture capitalists. And the venture capitalists are betting on things where they think there's a 90% probability it'll fail. But they think that they'll get a hundred X return if it hits. You know, so that's a, it's a different thing, right? So right. I would say it depends on your portfolio of money. A saver converts their money into a strong currency. An investor manages a portfolio of risk. I buy some Apple, some Facebook, some Google. They've all got risk. A trader manages a portfolio of risk derivatives. I'm guessing, uh, you know, I've got options in Apple and I think that Apple is going to beat on the next quarterly release. It's something you can do. It's just a different thing, right? I'm arbitraging people's risk derivatives and fine, knock yourself out if you're bored, if it's your profession. But and another analogy is like a decade ago, if you bought if you bought Apple and Amazon and just held them, you probably would have made a lot of money. You would have made 10 to 20 extra money.